Hello, welcome to this practice video on isotopes. We are going to take a look at these carbon isotopes. Um, in case you need some help with what isotopes are, I recommend that you go watch the video in the description box before watching this where I discuss what isotopes are and how they work. Right now, we're just going to kind of fill out this table looking at uh, three isotopes of carbon carbon 12, 13, and 14. This right here is um, the isotope's names, but if I wanted to write this in isotopic notation, um, I would have carbon, I would have the atomic number down here, and I would have the mass number up here. And we will do that for each of these once we have finished the table. So if we are looking at carbon isotopes, what makes them carbon is that they all have six protons. If they didn't have six protons, they would not be carbon. If it had seven, it would be nitrogen. If they had five, they would be boron. The number of protons is the atomic number and is going to tell you what the specific element is. And in this case, they're all carbon, so they're all six. Now, this is also going to be true for the electrons. Each of these, because we are assuming that they are neutral atoms, they are going to have the same number of protons and electrons. So for that reason, they'll all have six electrons. Now, the mass number is the sum of the protons and neutrons, and it's going to be written right here at the end of the name. So the mass number of carbon-12 is 12. Carbon-12 has 12 things in its nucleus. Six of them happen to be protons because it's carbon. Carbon-13 has 13 things in its nucleus, and that is the protons and the neutrons together. And carbon-14 is going to have a mass number of 14, having 14 subatomic particles inside its nucleus. Now, the number of neutrons is what is going to make these different isotopes of carbon, because really, at this point, they're mostly the same. And the number of neutrons is going to alter the mass number, which is part of what makes this different isotopes of carbon. So in order to figure out the number of neutrons, we're going to take the mass number, which is the sum of the protons and neutrons, subtract the number of protons, and then the leftovers will be the neutrons. So we would do 12 minus 6 to know that carbon-12 has 6 neutrons. Carbon-13 has 13 particles in the nucleus. Six of them are um, protons, meaning the leftover 7 would be neutrons. And then for carbon-14, with a mass number of 14, it's got 14 subatomic particles in the nucleus. Uh, six of them are protons, meaning eight of them will have to be neutrons. So the isotopic notation for carbon-12 would be uh, carbon with a six on the bottom and a 12 on the top. Carbon-13 would be a 6 on the bottom and a 13 on the top. And then carbon-14 would be carbon with a 6 on the bottom and a 14 on the top. The top number is always going to be the mass number, and the lower number is always going to be the atomic number, which is really nice because you could just kind of treat this like a math problem, 14 minus 6, and then it'll give you the 8 right there. Now, if we look at the box for carbon on the periodic table, the mass is coming in at 12.011. This is an interesting thing about chemistry is that we have uh, lots of different versions of carbon. We have carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14, and all of them are made by nature. They are naturally occurring. They were made at some point in, in nature by the supernovas and the explosions in outer space that create all of the elements. What is happening is that this 12.011 represents the average carbon atom. Now, what this really means is that the scientists, the chemists have collected carbon atoms and put them in a machine called a mass spectrometer. And the mass spectrometer is going to separate all of the carbon atoms by their mass. So the carbon 12s will go into one compartment, the carbon 13s will go into another, and the carbon 14s will go into a third compartment. And they will take a look at the size of the total sample and then the size of the 12, 13, and 14 samples. 
And they have made the determination that most of the carbons, like 98 plus percent of them, are carbon-12, and a very small percentage of them are carbon-13 and carbon-14. And what they have done is they take that data and they come up with an average, kind of like how your um, grades are an average of what you do. Your tests have more weight than maybe a homework assignment. So your tests are kind of like carbon-12. They have a, a strong pull on the average because they're worth a lot, but in the case of carbon-12, there's a ridiculous amount of them. So that 12.011 that's on the periodic table is the composite mass of all of the carbons. It's like an average of all the carbons that occur naturally on Earth. Well, for the purposes of isotopes, that space on the periodic table will tell us which one is the most abundant or in other words, which one is the most common in nature? And because that 12.011 is really crazy close to 12, that tells us that carbon-12 is the most prevalent, abundant, or popular isotope of carbon. And you can do this with any element on the periodic table. The average atomic mass, which is the mass on the box on the periodic table, is going to represent the average carbon, or the average gold, or the average copper, and when you take that and round it to a whole number, it will tell you which isotope is the most popular. Now we're going to take a look at chlorine, which, as far as I know, has two isotopes, chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. And looking at the box on the periodic table, it's pretty easy to tell that chlorine has 17 protons, regardless of the number of neutrons that it has. That's because its atomic number on the periodic table is 17, if chlorine had 18 protons, it wouldn't actually be chlorine, it would be argon. <laughs> so the fact that it's chlorine tells me that has 17 protons. Now, if both of these are atoms, which we are assuming that to be true, they would have a neutral charge overall, meaning that the protons would be equal to the electrons. The positives are going to be equal to the negatives. So in that case, each of these is going to have 17 electrons. Now, the mass number is written right here. We have the 35 for chlorine 35 and the 37 on chlorine 37. And then all we have to do is a little tiny bit of math to figure out the number of neutrons. The mass number minus the protons or the atomic number will tell us the number of neutrons. And that's because the mass number is the protons and the neutrons together. I have 35 subatomic particles in the nucleus of chlorine 35, and the question is how many neutrons are there? So I'll take that 35 and subtract 17, and my brain wants to say it's 18, and that is true. So chlorine 35 would have 18 neutrons, and then if I had a mass number of 37 in a chlorine, uh, the difference between those is the 20 neutrons that are in the nucleus of a chlorine. So if I needed to write the isotopic notation here, I would write the symbol chlorine. I would write the atomic number on the bottom, which for chlorine, of course, is 17, and then the mass number on top of 35. You may also sometimes see this with just the chlorine and the 35, uh, because we're, we're assuming that everybody has a periodic table and knows that the, the 17 goes right there. For chlorine 37, we would do the same chlorine with the 17 on the bottom and the 37 on top. Okay, so that is all we're going to do on isotopes and isotopic notation. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below this video. Subscribe so you don't miss our next practice session, and I'll see you there. Bye!